My name is Jennifer Gray Thompson, and I am the CEO of After the Fire. Welcome to the podcast, How to Disaster, Recover, Rebuild, and Reimagine. In this podcast, we bring you the very best practices, best hearts, and great ideas from other disaster-affected communities. Thank you for joining us. Well, welcome again to How to Disaster, a podcast to recover, rebuild, and reimagine. This podcast really today, though, is about how to prepare. Like, what can you do as a, as a citizen prepper in order to prepare your family and make sure that you have the very basics of what you need? We've heard from a lot of people uh, around not only the country, but even in Australia about how these uh, climate change disasters really are taking effect and are um, changing the lives of people who didn't ever actually expect to not be able to depend upon their power grid or their government to help them in case of a disaster. This is one of those uh, situations where there's a lot a person can do in advance to build resiliency. Resiliency is only a matter of how innovative we are willing to be. And Josh is uh, willing to be innovative and he's willing also to be teased, but to a certain extent by his social group for his real dedication to being uh, prepared for a disaster. But he makes no apologies for that because he also knows that he has equipped himself in such a way that not only will he be able to help his own family, but he also might be able to help your family. And I think we have to build that into our citizen preparedness is how is it do, that we can um, ensure that we are self-sufficient enough that we can also be of service. So there is a community component to this as well. I hope you enjoy part two of my podcast with uh, Josh Farrell. Um, he is funny, he is charming, and he's very, very smart, and he has a lot to offer. And thank you so much for spending this time with us on How to Disaster. Uh, let's see, what else do I got here? All right, this might be considered a little overkill, but it didn't cost a lot, and I did it a while ago. Um, but it's just a couple of um, walkie-talkies. Okay, so now the reason I did this was I wasn't like, oh my God, we're gonna have to run into the hills and so I'm gonna buy all terrain walkie talkies. I think this cost me, it's a Midland or whatever and it was like 50 bucks for two of them. You got a charger stuff and you can charge it in the car and batteries, it works on batteries as well as a charged battery. But more importantly um, is, you know, self cell phone towers, as we know, which happened up uh, in Santa Rosa, those burn communication was really bad. Um, no one's really gonna be on the other end of this except my wife. And if her and I are in cars following each other, stuck in traffic for hours, trying to get out of town, we have a way to communicate with each other. If she needs to walk down to the store or go to the end of the street to check on somebody, we have a lot of elderly people in our neighborhood who we would check on, you know, for sure. Um, she can take one and I can have one and we have a way to communicate without cell phone towers. So it's a good I'm going to support why I'm actually going to adopt that <laughs> too. I'm going to tell Doug um, because there is this there is this story in Paradise that it was it ended up in a documentary where you had one of the first responders. Um, he called his wife and he said, okay, you know, he's basically, he's going into the fire. They're, they're, they're losing their home in paradise. She's evacuating. Cell phone towers are all burned down. So for eight hours, he didn't know if she made it. And she didn't know if he made it. Uh. They both had eight hours of anguish and it's that's it, and that has stuck with me so strongly that we actually funded a study this year by scott adams about uh, communications in disasters and how we need to do better but just for our own personal responsibility i think that having the walkie talkies is very smart and i'm going to get them for my family too that's very smart it looks like a lot of people are getting uh, christmas gifts from you this year <laughs> <laughs> And, and actually, you know, disaster preparedness is a perfect gift. I'm just telling you, especially as you get older and you're like, I don't know about, I don't, you know, everyone's got their own thing, but you know, the older you get, you're like, what do I get this person? We're all older and, you know, uh, everyone appreciates a little disaster thing they can throw in a bag, I think. Um, you well, know. you know what? They'll appreciate it when they need it. So I asked Doug for Christmas this year, I wanted full respirators um, for each of us. 
And that's one of the things that I, and he was like, really, that's really what you want. I'm like, yes, that's really, I really like that. Thank you. All right. Well, that's a good, that's a good segue because, um, next up, oh, am I there yet? No, sorry. That's okay. Is I'm totally break. enjoying this, Josh. Thank you All so right. much. So now I didn't buy this respirator for my pack. Um, I had this respirator because I do construction, um, and I've used it for uh, chemicals and things like that. So it is still this is an N95, so it does work for smoke. And I actually just used this when I was coming up for the last fires uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had to drive up north uh, two weeks ago um, during those fires uh, that are still going on, the complex fires. And it was so smoky during uh, driving up I-5. It was nuts. Uh, it was like Thule fog. You could maybe see uh, an eighth of a mile on I-5 all because of smoke for hours. So I was able to, um, put this on, which I had brought with me out of my bag, and uh, these ski goggles, which are used old ski goggles, uh, which I got for, I think, 15 bucks or something like that, and these kept the smoke out. And at first, I was getting real choked up with the smoke, and my eyes were burning, and I put these two things on with my glasses underneath it, um, and uh, I drove for like three hours fine. Um, so... Very I would helpful. like to highlight that as well, because the number one thing um, if, that you have to have access to in this type of disaster is a mask. And it has to be, it's not your COVID mask isn't going to work unless it has an N95 insert. Um, you cannot depend upon people actually having them to give to you because they go to first responders first, which they should. But just having a stockpile of, if, if, if you don't want to go with the respirator route, that you do have at least two N95s per person in your household ready to go. Or you can go the respirator route. And I think the goggles are really smart too. Like until you, you know, you're breathing in not just um, ash like you would think in a wood fire. You're actually breathing in chemicals and burnt plastics and um, all kinds of other things that you would not, because we don't even know yet what the long-term ramifications are from our past three years of fires. So super right. smart. Yeah, uh, on that note, next to this is my um, N95s. And I have two of these in here. Um, I do keep these masks in plastic because there's elastic bands on them. And over time, if you don't use them, uh, they could get a little more on the brittle side. Um, they can, and to be clear, they do expire, so you should check the expiration date. I'm not going to tell you what you should do with them after they've expired, um, because I'm not sure if it's a medical grade expiration or if it has, I'm not sure what the function is and when they decide how they're expired, but if you are, if you're storing them safely and checking it quarterly, you should be fine. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, so I highly recommend these. Oddly enough, we're definitely prepared for this pandemic because of the fires, um, we had a whole, you know, we had 10 of these uh, at our house. And so we were able to give them to some neighbors uh, when the pandemic kind of started, we were able to dole those out. So again, the more you're prepared, you can then focus on helping other people. And, you know, at least for us, there's a lot of people that are gonna need help in our neighborhood over ourselves. So the more I'm prepared, got all my stuff, then I can tend to other people's. Next into my um, my goodie bag, if you will. Um, let's see. Now, a couple of these, so I've added stuff you may not need, but uh, these are some wet ones from, uh, I think I got these for free, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and some tissues, uh, obviously when it's smoky out, uh, that has effects. And then this is just a little uh, a first aid kit that I got for free from the disaster fair. Free stuff at the disaster fair. Fun. Um, they try and sell you on a bunch of stuff at disaster fairs, but it's still cool just to see the stuff. And oddly enough, Kirsten didn't want to go. Doug didn't want to go. Rowan was kind of on the fence. My friends that all said they were going to go because I signed them all up, all of them bailed on me. 
um, Doug had to go because he was staying with us. So Doug and Rowan and Kirsten and I went and they actually had a really fun time, I have to say. So, um, I mean, what they else? They did. You? And just to be, just for context, Doug is my husband and Rowan is my 13 uh, year old stepson, who's pretty much the best person ever to go through a pandemic or a disaster or travel with. Like he is chill. So, yes. Yeah. And he's got a fantastic laugh and that'll get you through a lot. Um, very funny. That's true. Um, so some other things that I have in the bag. Um, okay. This was a little bit of an investment, but um, it's a, it's called Life Straw. And again, I'm not a, I'm not the, I don't work for Life Straw. I just did some research. This uh, is a water filter. So you can actually, it's a straw that you can uh, drink any water and it will filter out most of the contaminants. If a river, a creek, whatever. Obviously, you hope in the three days that you're not in that situation. Um, I have a bunch of different water things <coughs> in my bag. This is um, a photo. I like. I made some photocopies. I don't know if you could see that. It says how to treat water. Oh yeah, I can see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is just a reminder. What is the cost? I, I assume it's like you'd find that in an REI or. A yeah, I think I got thing. this. Yeah, um, online the Lifesaver straw, and I, I feel like it was somewhere around forty bucks. And I got one for myself, one for Kirsten. Again, um, you can use it thousands of times. I think and how often am I going to use it? So it is an investment, but it's something that's not going to go old. Um, I don't think so. I have that. I also have a little chemical thing to, to clear water out. Uh, and I have some chlorine in my bag too. So it's a little, <laughs> that's because a little bit. you are I'm your prepared. bunker, your bunker adjacent, but it's my okay. Bunker is, my bunker is my bag. Um, <laughs> So there's that. And then uh, both my wife and I, my wife more so than I, cycles a lot. Um, I cycle a little bit. But uh, these nuns we use when we're going on long rides and they're electrolytes for water. So we order by the bulk because my wife did the AIDS ride and she cycled uh, almost 600 miles in a week. Um, so they're using these a lot. So we took a couple of these they, you add them to their water electrolytes, they, we threw them in our bag. We had them around, we threw them in our bag. So uh, you can take care of your dehydration needs if you're, you know, walking or stuck outside of your house for a while. It's just a, a little backup thing and didn't cost much money and we could throw it in the bag. Um, next up, geez. Uh, I, I went off the, you know, some of this stuff. So... Hey, Josh, would you mind um, for if you could send us a list of what's in your go bag and we can post it with the video either in the um, as a document attached to it. Just a super. Absolutely. I mean, we'll, we'll do the official one, what they tell you to do and in the order of evacuation and all that. But I'm sure that some people would be like, what was he talking about? I don't want them to have to go and rewind. So. Right. Uh, that sounds great. And I because uh, I added a few things, which some people might be like, that's weird, but. I just, you know, my own thing. So uh, again, from um, the free disaster fair uh, matches uh, strike kit, in case I have to light something on fire. Um, I have two old padlocks. So one's in Kirsten's bag and one's in my bag. I haven't seen that written anywhere, but it just makes sense that if we were rolling with our bags, but for some reason we had to put them in lockers or lock them up somewhere for any amount of time to make sure our stuff was safe. It made sense. Uh, I had them sitting around, so I didn't, didn't really spend any extra money on them. Uh, I put them in the, uh, in the bag. I also am not going to show you the backside of it because it, I taped the combination number on it. Right. So that was my next question. Thank you. Cause you're, we all forget our combination. You're like, oh, what was that? Like, no, put that on some painter's tape so you remember, and then you can tear it off. But yeah, uh, you definitely want to use that hey, over. Can I do a check now? Because it's doing the same thing. Yeah, I don't hear you very well. Yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, I just went through the padlock and the matchsticks that I had in this bag. Uh, both Kirsten and I have whistles. Whistle, very important. 
Doesn't cost a lot, honestly, like a dollar sixty-two or something. I think this one was free at the uh, at the fair. <laughs> All right, it's pretty loud. This one's better. That one's uh, better. Yeah. So, well, thank God I have both of them. Uh, so whistles, uh, in case there's an emergency, of course, uh, in case you're lost, any of that stuff, uh, that's mostly, that's, that's in most, um, recommendations that you have a whistle with you. So highly recommend. Yeah, I think it could also help with your neighbors if they didn't, if for some reason the sheriff hasn't gotten there yet with the high low sirens will be turned on throughout the state of California, but that's right. not federally true. And so we expect that people will be watching this video who are in other areas and, you know, having a whistle or some sort of apparatus that can alert your neighbors might be more efficient than um, trying to run from house to house to house to house. Yeah. And also, if you're trapped in your house, you know, uh, hopefully you're not. But if you are trapped in your house in an earthquake, certain situation, and your to-go bags nearby, you do have a, hopefully, you know, and you can't get out, you have a whistle and, you know, we... We hear those stories all the time. People trapped in rubble for a few days. Well, a whistle's going to come in handy if you need it, you know. Uh, next thing that I had is just a little backup of um, ibuprofen. Hopefully you're not injured for any reason. Um, also, Pepto-Bismol kind of tabs. Again, I'm not, hi, Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> um, I'm not a spokesperson for Pepto-Bismol and I do have allergies, so I have a backup of Claritin. And of course, very important, I think, um, I also have a little inhaler for my allergy, but the smoke really, I mean, you can think like, oh, it's just a little smoke. It's not a big deal. You really want to have this as a backup, especially now where we are. We got fires every year you know, you just plan, but have allergy medication and proper medication if you are sensitive to poor quality air because... Well, and even if you think you're not sensitive to poor quality air, like I'm not very sensitive to it, but having been through enough disasters now and then visited enough fire areas, like I always take an allergy pill and I take extreme um, precautions because it is so harmful for um, to breathe in all those burned chemicals. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I took mine out, but I usually have eye drops in there as well. Um, I, cause I took them North with me, but you know, if you're going to get some eye drops and you see a two pack, get a two pack one's for you and one's for your bag. Um, those will definitely come in handy. They came in handy a couple weeks ago when I was up North. They've come in handy right now. We have really poor quality here in Los Angeles. We have a fire about 12 miles east of us, uh, threatening Mount Wilson. So our air quality has been poor for the whole week. Um, so I've been using that. Uh, let's see, what else do I have in my, ah, disaster fare. These are uh, snap lights that last for 12 hours. They're green. Um, Smart. I like I have, that. I have six of them in here and six in Kirsten's bag. I don't know why we, we may not need them, but if it's nighttime and, you know, you don't want to waste your battery power for your, you know, uh, you want to always be conscious of, of, you know, your your battery and your chargers and all of that. So these snap lights are great. They're not expensive. And I'm pretty sure that I got these for free from a, from a disaster fair. So, and they last for 12 hours. So, uh, even if we have a power outage at the house, that's not a disaster for whatever reason, I'm able to light one of these and we don't have to worry about uh, wasting all our batteries. So. so one of the things that I like about your approach to this, Josh, is you're sort of thinking about it, like if the infrastructure of our lives is absent for say 72 hours, just at the very beginning, you would be able to like, you, you could deal with your own lighting, your own banking, your own um, transportation if necessary, your own water, like all of those things. And so I, I, I really am enjoying this and thank you so much, keep going. Sure, um, yeah, and you only really need to think about three days. Like I said, some people are like, I'm, I'm prepared for a year, you know, I just, not that guy. Uh, I am prepared, we do have backups of food, especially with the, the quarantine. Um, the, you know, I feel pretty comfortable for a couple weeks here. Um, but again, like I said, 
what I like is like this to go bag works as a to go bag. But again, like these, if the power goes out here for two weeks because the transformer blew or, or two days, um, there's certain stuff in my to go bag that will actually help us in our daily life. So you want to think of it that way. So it's not just a waste of money. Um, let's see. Uh, what else do I have in my bag? Here we go. Oh, of course, we're all used to these. Uh, and we had a bunch of these because of our to-go bags, which kind of helped. But uh, gloves, and they're hard to come by uh, now. I mean, I think more are coming out. But uh, we have extra gloves in both of our bags. And this, again, is just in, in case we're in a dire situation where we're helping people and you want to be safe so that you're not uh, getting any anyone else's blood on you or germs or anything that's you know uh now they come in handy for for uh the pandemic um but these are really good just to have in your bag just in case very smart um let's see here so in kirsten's bag um so we kind of split the difference i have the double a batteries um in my bag that's a lot that little <laughs> bunny um but again so um i write i write the date that i buy these on it so i know and they're you know they're good batteries last a pretty long time uh i'm still always checking my bag but i've over the last two years i have gone through one of these for other stuff and then replaced this inside my to-go bag so again if it's batteries that you have in your house and you need back, you have backup batteries for certain things in your house, just have a bunch of them and put them in your to-go bag and just make sure, make sure once you get down to just a few that you buy a new one. But, um, so I have double A's and then in Kirsten, she has triple A's and that covers most of our products, uh, that we have. Meaning if I can't get solar on my radio, I, it, it is battery operational. Um, the walkie talkies are battery operational, and then I have a charger that's uh, battery operational. Um, let's see. This is just because uh, I had a bunch of extra ones, and I do find them extremely handy. Are zip ties? <laughs> oh, smart! They're inexpensive. I use them. I mean, I just I'm I like to do construction. I like to you know build weird things, but zip ties come in handy in so many different ways. As you can see, these, the backpack that I have does have a bunch of hanging things on it. Um, so where you did know, you get that backpack? That's pretty uh, nice. Well, I gotta say, I got a great deal because I was talking to the security guard that I knew. Uh, and he, we were talking about to-go bags and he's got two daughters and he's like, yeah, each daughter has a bag and I have a bag. And I was like, oh, I just have like a like I mentioned earlier, a crappy backpack. And he's like, oh, go to this, um, again, I don't work for it, and I, I can't remember the name. They're out of Santa Clarita, but it's a police gear, uh, a police gear website. And uh, this bag was like on sale for 45 bucks. Wow. And this is legit. I mean, this is better than any school backpack I've ever had. Um, and it's got, you know, so if I was trekking or had to, had to walk, um, I can hang a bunch of stuff off of this. If you don't have any of these clips, I forget if they're Harbinger or something like clips. Uh, again, zip ties. But zip ties come in handy. Uh, in my bag, I have um, the zip ties. And where did I put my tape? There it is. So zip tie, and I found this on sale. It's Gorilla Tape at Home Depot. They had like a sale, it was like $2.99. So this and zip ties are in my bag. I don't have duplicates in Kirsten's bag. And this is just in case, I don't know, you know, if you gotta- You, you don't know what MacGyver moment, a disaster- Honestly, moment. like, do I, need a, do I need to like wrap a sheet up and put it over our head for, so so we don't get sunburned during the day? Or I, I don't know if we're, we're out stuck somewhere, so. I may have one thing. I just, I was trying to think of one thing I might have that you don't have that I did put um, aside uh, when we had our three to go bags one for me, one for my husband, one for our son. Um, I happen to be the owner of several hard hats, construction hard hats. So I put aside a hard hat for each of us along with safety goggles. 
Now they're not as good as like the goggles that you're using, but I knew that in, in just in case that um, a hard hat is actually not a bad idea, a little bulky, um, but you know, definitely something to think about. Might've been excessive, but I also work in disasters. So I also have this idea that I have to be prepared, you know, in a way that I yeah. may not have to be, but to enter into an area that is unsafe or unstable in some way, that I'll need a hard hat. Uh, I, I would wear a hard hat. Um, I mean, I wear You're a, a little jealous hat. right now, aren't you? I wear a hard hat on a Saturday night. Um, uh, oh. I can dance. And high-vis vests. Highly recommend that you just order a couple offline that, you know, like you see on Caltrans workers. Um, very helpful. And it really depends on what you imagine your role might be in a disaster. But I can tell you from, um, from experience that we had too, you probably saw like during the 2017 fires that every single day I wore the same high vis vest that um, TPW, Transportation and Public Works had given to me earlier. Um, but it also has pockets in it and it was um, really helpful. I've saved to this day and I have two more, uh, one for row, one for deck. That's awesome. Um, we, we should definitely do that. We have, um, and again, trying to incorporate certain things that are already in your life so you're not out spending a bunch of money and trying to do this. Both my wife and I are cyclists. So we have uh, bike lights that are you can see from a long way away, but we also have a lot of reflective gear that we use when, when especially me, I look like a, a minion <laughs> on a bike. It's kind of ridiculous, but I don't want to get hit. And I ride my bike around downtown Los Angeles, you know, um, and it's a, it's a long commute, but uh, I have a lot of reflective wear. So that stuff is near our front door that we use for our bikes. But again, that's something that I would grab if I was running out of the house. Um, right. That's a great, the reflective gear is awesome. Um, sunblock. A lot of people forget about that. You know, you don't know if you're going to be stuck outside of your house. Uh, hopefully, you know, again, this pandemic now really changed what our um, emergency shelters are like. You know, when I was in Sonoma, uh, I was able to, because we got the house, I thought, pretty well secured in the first few days, uh, we were able to take breaks. I went and volunteered at the at the Sonoma Valley High School and did a couple of shifts uh, helping people. And you really see in that situation, I had never seen that hundreds of people on cots that did not expect to be in this situation. You had people from, it doesn't matter, it, it's, it, it crosses class, it co crosses financials. You had uh, low-income people, you had people that just lost their $5 million house and they're sitting in a gym on a cot just stunned um, with the COVID situation, the pandemic that has had some effects on how many people can be in a given structure inside. And so a lot of people have been staying outside. Well, if you're stuck outside and you don't have shelter during the day, um, some block. So, or if you maybe I can, I'll just take a moment to update. Um, I was in Oroville yesterday and in Paradise, and it was interesting because I was in Paradise during their 2018 um, fire, and I um, that's where I met Charles Brooks, who then became the executive director and started Rebuild Paradise Foundation. So I spent the day with him yesterday, and because we're in the age of COVID, and so this is this isn't going to be forever, but for people to understand that. Um, if you are under a fire warning, take your car out of the garage, first of all. Put the stuff, if you have the time, that you want to have in your car and be ready to go with that. Because the chances are incredibly high that you will be told a meeting point um, that you can go there and you will have to remain in your car. For people who don't have cars, then there is a separate plan for those. For people who are unhoused, there's a separate plan for that as well. Um, a lot of hotels are being used. but um, until for at least another year, um, our sheltering doesn't, it looks completely different. Like yesterday, we had trouble finding where the 2,000 um, homes lost, where those people had actually gone to. And most of them probably went to stay after the first day or so with somebody that they know, but that's not, um, that's not something that you should count on, that there will be a certified shelter near you. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I mean, what they did in Sonoma, I thought was phenomenal watching that happen three years ago and, and how many people they were able to take care of. And I mean, Sonoma already is, has, you know, 
some of the best nonprofits in, in the state, if not the country. So people really took care of the community and anyone that was there. That was phenomenal to see the amount of clothing and, and, you know, just all those things. You could go into the gym and you could pick from certain things and that was great, but really you can't, you can't count on that. You have to be able to be self-sufficient for three days. Um, back to the bag. It's a big thing. Uh, uh, pets, you know, um, like I mentioned in the USB drive, we have our pets information, but, uh, we just bought actually a pet leash for our cat, which we have, but we haven't used it cause the cat's going to probably not like talk to us. The cat doesn't talk. It just meows. It, it's like cat talk. Um, so the cat does do cat talk, but that's about it. Um, the cat will be really mad once we put the leash on, but we do have a leash. Our cat's fat. So we had to get a dog leash. <laughs> You know, a small also, dog leash because we got a big cat. Yeah, I, uh, I am going to interview a couple of people who do um, had a disaster for animals, and but with cats because they're so um, saucy, as it were. Also, have a pillowcase because you may need to put that cat in a pillowcase if yes. she's like not having the leash thing. Just absolutely, and we we have a carrier, so that carrier is at our front door. I used to have it in the in the in the attic because we'd only take it out for if we had to take her to the vet, but now it's near the front door, so it's accessible. And uh, and one thing, I, I actually learned this at a fire disaster thing, and it's actually helped us with our cat in regards to getting the cat to go to the vet, is we've left that carrier out for a few days before we know we're going to grab her and throw her in it and take her to the vet, and she'll start to sleep in it. So she gets more comfortable and uh, so that's just something to think about. Uh, it's been much easier now that we've had her sleep in it and her, she kind of sees that there's our lounge thing of getting her in it. She's still not happy, but we get her in it. Um, but that's smart. I like that. I think it's smart. We have a, uh, her name, uh, her name and uh, Kirsten's phone number and a little bell. She does not like this, but we have it in our to-go bag because it, uh, if we were in an emergency, we would put that on her in case she did escape. Um, so she had something, um, and then some dry cat food. Um, let's see. And I, and I have more of this stuff a after I just go through my bag, I'll read you my other, I have a little list of stuff to grab if, if, if you have time, but this gets, a, this gets us through the most, like it's in your bag. You can grab your bag and bolt with the cat. And, and you're good for a few days. And one of the things that I will want to link um, in the information or in the comments is um, I love the, you know, if you have five hours to evacuate, here's what, here's what you do at hour five, hour four, hour three, and all the way down to five minutes. Right. I think that those, I think being aware of those is really uh, critical. Yeah. And I think ha just having your plan and being mostly together, I mean, Kirsten and I can, you know, Obviously, we can we can be out of here in in probably fifteen minutes, um, if not less. I mean, we really could just grab our bags and go. But if we wanted to grab a few extra things like hard copies of our uh, passports and stuff, those are all I have. That like you know, literally everything is in um, just in a little zip up zip up bag ready to go. So this just gets thrown in in my bag. This I just pulled out of my, you know, drawer because that's where we keep it. Don't break into my house and try and take me. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Yeah, You're don't do it. Out here. <laughs> so that's pretty much it in my bag. Um, I do have uh, some protective eyewear as well, I just noticed. So I have my smoke goggles, but I do have protective eyewear, which I think uh, I'm pretty positive I got this for free at a disaster fair. Um, and then the rest of the bag is my backup clothes. So long pants, long shirt. We live in Southern California, probably don't need, uh, that most of the year, but again, sun exposure. Um, you have to think about that. Maybe I'm walking for 10 miles. I don't know. Um, so they're light, they're light clothes. I don't, you know, I'd probably pack different clothes if I was in a colder climate. But uh, long sleeve pants, a couple pairs of underwear, a couple pairs of socks, just to get through, like I said, three days. Um, 
And then just, I'm going to throw in two more. What about things. shoes, Josh? Do you have shoes? And I'm only well, mentioning it because sure um, do. so many people ran barefoot for their lives, often in their underwear, with yeah. only having one phone between them. There are a lot of stories like that from our fires. Old New Balance. But yeah, I mean, when you're, look, th like these shoes were, were fine. They, they, you know, they weren't working as gym shoes anymore. So when I bought the new shoes, I just switch out. I just switched out Kirsten's the last time I checked our bags. I took her newest, oldest shoes and put them in. She had like these Converse in her bag for a while. And Converse, you know, while they're stylish, they're not going to be the most supportive shoes if you got to walk for a good distance. So when she was done with her gym shoes and bought some different ones, I took her gym shoes and I put them in there. So again, when you're checking every three months, you can switch stuff out. Um, actually, I'm pretty proud of my shirt that I have in here. I didn't really have a chance to wear it in public because people laughed at me, but um, this is my Rolling Thunder Sure. Oh, my goodness. So, like, you know, so That's so Sturgis of you. Pick your emergency wear well. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to mess with the Rolling Thunder. Um, so, you know, your bag, uh, can, you know, you can pack whatever you want. You know what? I got donated because um, we were sleeping out in our cars at Sonoma Raceway is um, my sister had gone up to where the donation center was and she found a Bill Murray t-shirt new. And um, I, wow. so I wore that for days and it also though made people smile, but, but he's like, I flip and love Bill Murray. And so having him right there, I don't know, it was very. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, one last thing uh, that I have, M most most stuff in our bags, because there's two of us, um, most of it's the same, but there, there are two uh, things that, a few things that I separated. So I, I mentioned it's a little Clorox bleach. You know, you may need to use this for disinfectant. Uh, you may need to use it to boil off uh, water um, for drinking. So we have one of these in Kirsten's bag. That's for both of us. And then, of course, these, which are really hard to come by. And these have been in my bag for a couple of years. We haven't used them during the pandemic, but some disinfectant wipes. wipes. Um, I know they're hard to come by now, but good to have in your bag uh, for cleanliness purposes. Well, for women, they also have to think about um, having feminine hygiene products. And if you exactly. have children who are, you know, of that age as well, that you just... It's not that there won't be any everywhere, but enough to get you through 72 hours. Yes, and in Kirsten's bag, that is fully loaded. Like, uh, that's completely taken care of. So, yeah, you do have to think about that in advance. And, again, uh, d don't – you may have to leave quickly, and you don't want your list of all the stuff you have to do. You know, this is that is something that's easily taken care of in advance. You just buy extra when you're at the store – Put it all together and have that in that to-go bag ready to go. You don't want to be searching for stuff. And like you said, make sure everybody's taken care of uh, in that situation. Uh, a couple other shared things that we have. Uh, obviously, these are pretty familiar now. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't necessarily know how important this is. But I, when the pandemic hit, I got one of these for our to-go bags. Uh, it's obviously a temperature gun for ourselves, but also we don't know what situation we're going to run into. So it, as things have progressed with what diagnoses are and CDC guidelines, um, I don't know if this is that useful, but it's, it's good to have. Uh, also, in both of our bags, we have a map of Los Angeles. Um, so my big thing is that the, the cell phones, because we had such kind of wishy-washy cell phone service up in Sonoma, that was a big thing for me. If like, you can't really count on your, your phone for, for communication and for MapQuest and all the, all the stuff, navigation, all that. So in our cars, because AAA, you can get them for free. So just go get your updated ones. I have Los Angeles County. Um, I have California and I have Bay Area because most likely we'd be probably somewhere in the state. Uh, those are uh, those maps are in each of our cars, and we have uh, Los Angeles maps in our bags. And that's just a backup. You may get diverted off, uh, detoured. People are running people through the two freeway up through Angeles mm -hmm. Crest, or however you're going to evacuate. Um, you can follow everybody, which you 
probably should, especially if emergency personnel is telling you where to go. But this gives you an idea of where the heck you are if you're on, oh, I'm on Highway 38. I didn't even know this existed. Um, easy to have, you know, they're free, pick it up, throw it in your bag. And it's not a big and bulky item, so it couldn't yeah. hurt. It's not gonna, no matter what, it's not gonna, worst case scenario is you have, um, you know, a, a tiny sliver of your go bag taken out. Exactly. I mean, th there's, I've introduced a lot of stuff here, but again, like I said at the beginning, I was able to pick it up. You don't want your bag to be a hundred pound bag also. So I probably have more stuff than we really need for three days. Uh, you want to be aware, you know, if, if you're getting grandma out of the house, you don't want grandma to have to wear a 50 pound pack because that grandma ain't going to like that. So think about that too. Who's wearing the pack? how much stuff needs to be in it. Think about that in advance, not at the time the situation's happening because uh, it's gonna be very confusing. One also last because you can shed, just to be clear, like you're right, you don't want, you know, if you have a four-year-old and you have a go bag, you want it to be, for that four-year-old, you need it to be appropriate for them, but for adults, like you can shed extra batteries if you need to. It's not, you know, so it's better to have them, don't make it too heavy, but remember that you can totally shed stuff as you go if it is too cumbersome. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, this is, again, something you probably don't need. I think somebody left these at our house for a party. They're sternos. But I threw one of each of these in our bag because I, just in case, I don't know if we're going to have to grab our canned food to get the heck out of, you know, to hunker down and we don't have access I mean, I'm pretty prepared. I have an extra propane tank on the property so I can use the barbecue if we need to like cook outside and don't have access to anything inside the house. Highly recommend that. Um, but a little sterno thing I just threw in the bag. But again, you could probably do without this. Um, that's kind of it for the bag. Um, on the bag though, on each of them, I, I made a little, a little list of other things that we need Oops, there we go. And then side two. Um, so this thing, which is from, I think, uh, this was a Rolling Stones thing, great concert uh, that we went to a couple years ago, but I took the Rolling Stones out and I put in our little to-go list. Um, again, in, a, in an emergency, you're juggling a lot of things. You, you know, you could be, your mom's calling, certain, my mom won't be calling, but um, you, you're juggling a lot of different elements. So you kind of want to, in your preparation, make it so you don't have to really think about anything. And I, I feel like I can multitask pretty well but lists are good and this is, so this is on each of our bags and what it is is, and some of it's redundant, but again, it doesn't matter. You just wanna be able to be like, I got 10 minutes, I gotta get all this. So if you can call this out to whomever in the house and you're, and this is extra stuff that's not your bag, if you have time. And obviously that, so on ours, we have um, our two to go backpacks uh, we have two earthquake emergency bags, the little red ones. We have those downstairs, and that is, uh, everyone should have those, period. Um, what are those? What are they? So they, uh, I forget who we bought them from, but we got them online, and I haven't even opened it because you're not supposed to open it till you use it. Um, but it's basically, each of them are good for two people for three days. Oh, like MREs? Like, yep, they have rations, they have, um, you know, I already have like a first aid kit and stuff, but it's just an extra one that we would, you would have your to-go bag and you would just grab that. And that's your, basically your food and your water for three days. So that's, there's no really food and water in these. There's some water, you know, cleaning things and the straw, the life straw, but we do have the two tiny uh, red packs. Um, disaster fair. We got them for free. So, um, and it's basically good for two people for three days for 72 hours. So uh, that's on here. So we grab our two to go backpacks, two earthquake emergency packs, um, personal information, which is 
all the stuff that you have, all the stuff that I have on the zip drive, I actually have hard copy of. If, if I have time, I'm grabbing that as well. The zip, the zip drives a backup, you know. Um, uh, extra masks, if you, if you have them, computers, Kindles, small chargers. I am a huge, I make sure our chargers are always charged. My wife doesn't necessarily do that, but you only <laughs> need one of us to do it. So I do it. So I like to have everything charged at near the front door. When we need them if we're going out for the day or whatever, but it's always charged. I charge everything, but I keep it all in one location. I know exactly where it is. So you grab that stuff. Um, I have a big orange charger on here and a solar panel charger. So um, also on my, where did I just put it? Uh, so this is, uh, I'm not a spokesperson for Webby Top, but this is a portable charger. Um, this has a, a solar panel that goes with it that I have as well. Again, if I need to exit the house, I'm just running out the house with my backpack and my chargers and running. But if I have time or if we're hunkered down here, this is a great, I can charge our computers on here. It's strong enough to run a fan. Um, it's not gonna take care of the refrigerator. That's why I have a generator and that's a whole different thing. But uh, I have a generator and a generator checklist in case we're hunkering down on property. Uh, I can run the refrigerators and everything off of a big generator, but this works. And there is a small little um, portable uh, solar, panels that go with it. Um, and those are really useful um, no matter what because we do have um, long-term power public safety power shutoffs across the state and so ours last year we had um, six of them the longest lasting six days and so at that point I bought like essentially a giant jackery um, because I was uh, working and so I was running my laptop off my car um, um, with a long uh, construction um, <laughs> Poured into our living room all night long, which meant that I was also making the air worse because I had my car on, which is not what you're supposed to be doing, but I had to run my laptop um, and my cell phone off of something. Right. Um, yeah. And this was, this is what they, you know, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, down south, the hurricanes, everyone has one of these. Um, they're, they're not incredibly expensive. If you got a little extra money, go for it. Uh, but super handy. Uh, again, even it like works great for a disaster, but uh, just if the power goes out for three days or whatever, you have a backup. So this is pretty great. Um, I would say that's a priority. So yes. there were um, just a couple of, we're going to wrap this up here, but just a couple of things yep. you'd like people to, to know. Um, I think that I, one of the reasons why I want to have you on is I, I do want to normalize this idea of being self-prepared and having it not be sort of like that you are building a bunker. I mean, if someone wants to build a bunker, whatever, that's fine. But, um, you know, to normalize, prepare a little more than your average person, I like that to be um, average. Yeah. I mean, again, I think, uh, like I mentioned about doing construction, you, you don't have to go out and buy all, I mean, you could if you got the money, but a lot of these things you can find used, you, know, you can put together your bag. Everyone should have a bag. And I tell you the most honest thing is when this pandemic kind of took hold um, and we were like, oh gosh, we got to hunker down and people were running around trying to get certain things. And it was a little chaotic at the beginning of this whole pandemic. I already had to go bags these were already set for a whole different type of emergency. We slept pretty well because I was like, we're kind of like already three quarters of the way prepared. Yeah, we got to shift a few things, but it it's definitely just going to give you a peace of mind. And again, like they say, you know, if the plane's going down, you put your mask on and then you help somebody else. At least from my situation, I know there's going to be many more people. Or there's a lot of older elderly people on our street and stuff. Um, they're going to need help. So the faster I'm prepared, it's my ease of mind. Then I can go out and I can assist other people. You know. And the way that we'll close too is I'll say this: that we don't we don't wish a disaster upon anyone. Um, having been through um, our disaster, no, 
it's traumatizing. Like it's, it's very traumatizing. And but if there are ways, anything you can do just to um, lower the anxiety, lower the level of trauma. And again, put yourself in a position where you might be able to help your neighbor or at your local shelter for out of this pandemic. Um, it will it will make a huge difference then because one thing about disaster is that it brings everything down to the very visceral level. Like it was as it's, it's, it's terrifying as it is on a visceral level, it is also the very best of humankind on a on a visceral level. And you can um, really improve your situation by just a few simple steps to be ready to go when it's time to go. Absolutely. And I think you're right. You know, it's good to be prepared. But one of the biggest things that I saw come out of that disaster, and I still think I have PTSD from it, especially when it comes to smoke and things, um, was the, how the community reacted. And I'm not surprised with Sonoma because Sonoma is, I think, a phenomenal community and has a great history of people taking care of people. But watching how people came together to take care of each other was totally phenomenal. And I don't wish a disaster amongst on anyone, any of that, but um, opportunity comes up and people really stepped up to take care of people for a long period of time. Meals, shelter, just reaching out and taking care of people. So you, you do see the best in people, you know. Um, so that's why I think it's really important. Be prepared so then you can help because everyone needs everybody in this situation. It's not just, and maybe that's why I don't have a bunker. It's not just about me because you really need the group. You know. Actually, that's a perfect note to leave it on. And thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. all of your time. Well, thanks for having me. I think Rebuild North Bay Foundation is fantastic and doing a great job about getting information out to people. So thanks for having me. Thanks so much, Josh. You got Take it. Care. Take care. Thank you. Well, we've come to the end of our two-part series with Josh Farrell, uh, How to Disaster Recover, Rebuild, Reimagine, and Prepare. And that is something really important to note. And something I noted in the first um, a part of this series is that we are sitting here, it is um, the end of February, and Texas is currently under a deep freeze. Many people who never expected to be huddling together um, in a deep freeze, um, very cold, without heat, without power, are currently suffering. Part of our, the goal of this podcast is to reduce the suffering of people and to draw attention to the fact that climate change is real. And we are all climate refugees in some ways when we find ourselves um, at that place where weather has sort of taken over our lives and a disaster has occurred and you cannot turn to the government. And so I really hope that you take some of the lessons here that Josh has put forward and you're able to implement them in your own life. And again, it's not just about preparing your own family. It's also about how can I be prepared so I can help my neighbor. Remember that a lot of elderly people um, in your neighborhood may not be prepared and they may need uh, a little bit of your food and a little bit of your kindness and a little bit of your assistance. You know, recently for Christmas, I asked my husband for a full face gas mask, which sounds really something kind of dark, but I didn't want it for a dark reason. I wanted it so that when we have our next wildfire or whatever else comes, that I am able to be of service so that I can breathe, but also so that people can see my face, so that they can see that they can see my eyes, so they could see my uh, what I was saying and they could hear me, but I could also breathe clean air. So I wasn't just thinking about myself or my family. I was also thinking, how can I be of service to people who might need me? And um, that I, as a citizen, have a responsibility towards making sure that I'm there for my community. And that's how I see this podcast series with Josh as well. So I really want to thank Josh for spending this time with us. And I really want to thank you for also taking time out of your day and out of your busy life to spend time with How to Disaster. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on the podcast, How to Disaster. For more information, please visit our website at afterthefireusa.org. And if you liked this video, please hit subscribe.